Hey guys. Hey everybody. So, we are going live today. I'm back Saturday morning, 11 a.m. And I'm excited to be here with you guys this morning. Um, I'm going to be talking about what might be holding you back from being aligned. And I wanted to share something um, that I'm celebrating with a friend of mine. Um, she is, <laughs> it's, and if you guys are coming online, if you're popping online, say hi or wave or like send a heart or something. I'm so excited when you guys pop on live here. Um, and also, um, make sure to, um, add your question. Like if you think of something, if something's been nagging at you, then pop your question on and um hey jen it's good to see you hey constanza um then please add your question because then i can be intuitively tuning in for you even while the session is going be listening for your answer because a lot of times your answer comes <laughs> so if you have been having something um nagging at you, then hold that intention to receive your answer from this little live, okay? Because you'll definitely get it. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about what might be holding you back from being aligned. And this is a really big, this is a big one for people because most of the people that come to me for a session, they they have something holding them back and it tends to be I mean we all know that we hold ourselves back you know that's that's the pretty simple answer is that you're holding yourself back but but how do you get past that right I mean how do you how do you have a breakthrough from that and that's why I've been doing these series because for me personally, and then for the people that I work with, um, what I found is that it's it's all about being aligned. So if you're not aligned, if you don't know what your truth is, then you're going to be held back. That's It's just plain and simple because you're going to get what you need from your current situation, right, until you get aligned and you get clear. And then once you do then things start falling away from you and that's hard sometimes you have, but I'm going to kind of give you a little story today try to keep it as brief as I can because it's so beautiful outside and we should all be outside if you're not please go out there and listen to this um, but I want to share this story with you because um, this has been a long road for this gal that I've been working with this has been years now that I've been working with her and her biggest problem right now is the decision whether to buy her own house being a woman in the relationship. Should she be the one to purchase the house and, and put her name on it? Even though she's going to be in a shared relationship and, you know, he might be making less, um... There's all these things coming up for her, and I love that she is in this position right now, being a woman. I work with a lot of women. I do work with men, too. Um, I love working with either or, and what I find is that when we work together, a lot of times you're, you're, these societal rules and beliefs come to the surface to get... <laughs> <laughs> um, to get, you know, annihilated. I mean, that's really what needs to be done <laughs> because they just hold us back. They, they hold you back. So um, a lot of people that come to me because I, I work more in the spiritual realm, you know, and I think it parallels. So if this isn't you and you're joining, you know, that's totally fine. But just listen for the parallels because 
you know, me being a medium and having to figure that all out, I mean, you know, seeing spirits and, um, you know, having to accept that and working with spirit realm and, you know, and then having a religious background and, you know, religion rules, right, and all of that. I mean, there's so much there. Um, and you want to you want to allow those things to come to the surface and they might be hard to look at but when they do come to the surface then you can finally say okay um, this is where I'm at right now and then talk to someone reach out to someone a teacher a mentor someone who has been there been through it um, has clarity can kind of show you like it's okay. It's going to be totally fine. Um, so a lot of people that come to me are in those positions of sometimes they're just now um, starting to have, you know, really vivid dreams or really crazy things being shown to them. Um, or they're, suddenly their relationship is becoming really tough and they don't know you know which direction to go with that um in in this case with this woman this kind of the story i want to tell you guys with this woman um she came to me originally because she wanted a reading um and it was appropriate at the time because her life was a mess i mean she was with a guy who was abusing her um she was uh, in a job that she she was trying actually for to get a promotion in the job and the job wasn't even right for her and so she thought she knew in her mind what was supposed to be you know right for her and <clears throat> and when she came to me it was more for like a mediumship reading and her best friend came through really strongly and her friend was hilarious. I mean, she was cursing and loved food. I mean, I would have hung out with this girl, you know, this person that came through. I was cracking up. Um, and I totally took on the persona, you know, of this friend of hers. And, and she was, we were both just cracking up because her friend was telling her why are you hanging out with this guy why are you putting up with him you know like and cursing at her and we were laughing together and and that that reading really hit home for her like it was a huge moment for her and I think it kind of shook her up and that's sometimes what happens when you get a you know a first session um, or you first start to get into awareness training, it can shake you up and it can, it can make you feel on edge, right? <laughs> and it can make you feel like scared, like you don't want to go there. And yet it's the truth. It's truth coming to the surface. And this has been a big thing lately that I've been kind of um, getting people into more. Instead of doing vision boards, I've been telling people to do truth boards. And I'll kind of explain that towards the end. Like, it's a great tool that you can use for yourself. So this gal, um, it shook her up. And it ended up really speaking to her, but, but I think in a way that it just kind of put her on like a, whoa, I don't know, this seems like a lot you know, to me. And that definitely happens in a session. A lot of times people will feel so much from it and their head is full. And it's because they're still in their brain. They're still in their mind. They haven't learned how to fully connect up the heart with the mind. Because you want to have both. You don't want to just be in your head and you don't want to just be in your heart. You want to have both aligned. Okay, that's that's what alignment is. So she took a break from me probably for about six months. I didn't hear from her. And then she reached out and she was like, Mandy, that guy is out of my life. Kicked his ass out. <laughs> and that was a huge step for her because, and she had to explain to me, you know, and she was, she came clean. She was like, when you told me all of this, I was very scared. 
it brought up a lot of fears in me about how was I going to provide for myself and for my kids. Um, you know, where was I going to live? How was I going to deal with this? Like, it brought up a lot for her to process. And, and you know, I tell people, you don't have, you can come to me through all of that. Like, I'll help you work <laughs> through all of that. But for some people, it, it's that initial shock, and then they need a little break to kind of process. So that's why I always tell everyone, you're, every situation's different, and it may take you a certain amount of time, and then you'll know when it's time to pick back up and, and come back, you know, for a session or to work through something again. So she ended up kicking him out, and that was a huge step for her. And, and it was brave. And she did it without any safety net. Nothing. I mean, she just had her job, which still was not a fit for her. Um, but, but she knew, like, this was, I cannot live like this anymore. And, and it, what it took really was, I think, you know, we did the session, I pointed out to her some truths that were there that maybe she wasn't um, accepting or wanting to look at and one of them was that he was being abusive to her kids and I think she was um, making excuses you know for him and I get lit up when I'm saying that so somebody on here <laughs> hearing this <laughs> has some of this going on so listen carefully um, so she was she was basically being passive to the situation and allowing this man to say things and do things to her children that were not appropriate. And so I think we brought it to the surface and it was just kind of sitting there, you know, and she wasn't fully ready to release it yet because of her anxiety about how am I going to make this all work. But Really when she, I think when, what finally happened was he did something, you know, that crossed the line. And now she had that awareness of this is not appropriate. When this happens, it's not appropriate. And that was it. That was, that was it for her. So she knew that was a clear no, cannot keep doing this anymore. And so she took that brave step and she um, told him, we're not doing this anymore. And he, and he ended up um, being released from her life and still kind of lingered. You know how that happens <laughs> when you're trying to break free from a relationship. I know some of you on here know what I'm talking about. Um, because, you know, it takes time to unwind from situations and from relationships. It's not an overnight process. We talked about this in the last uh, Saturday video, so go back and listen to that because that was a sad story. But um, it, it takes time to unwind from that. And so she ended up um, then coming back to me and we, w we went forward doing a new session and we celebrated this big step. And sometimes it doesn't, when you're the person getting the session, I know how this feels because I went through this, through my own stuff. You don't feel like celebrating. You just feel awful. You know, like your, your world's basically falling apart. Now you're alone, you know. Is it better to be alone than in a relationship that's abusive? I think so. <laughs> But but some people think no, okay? A lot of people say, I'm going to stick through this. And all the power to them. I do think I have faith that you can shift the energy in that relationship just by shifting your own um, energy because things will fall away from you and that will allow things to release from your relationship. So um, you don't have to leave it, but there are times when you do need to take a break. And in her case, that was the case. So um, she did that, and then now we were at this current point, this current juncture in her life. She wanted a new session. We did it. Her friend came through again and was cursing and cracking us up and, and telling her, you know, 
why are you staying at that job? And, you know, like, I mean, her friend was just super honest, always coming through and telling her, you know, just how it was, just laying it out there. And I loved that. I loved that. So I was letting it happen. I'm like, I think your friend's pretty much telling you, like, you know, now it's the job, you know. And so this gal would say to me, well, and this is what's fun, right? The next thing that she did was she started, she, she thought that the job she was in, she was supposed to get a promotion and um, do uh, a specialty type of work in this, in this job that she had. She was in nursing and she wanted to do like respiratory work. And when I tuned in, I was like getting a no, like a heavy no on that. I mean, I was even getting a no on the nursing work, which, you know, I, I was kind of forward with her and I said, you know, your friend's telling you, what are you doing there? I'm getting a no. I mean, and you know, you're coming to me because something feels off. So obviously, you know, we've got to address this now. And, but in her mind, right, she's stuck in her mind still. No, I'm supposed to get a promotion. I'm supposed to work towards this. I want to make more money. I know I'm supposed to make more money. <laughs> so the next best thing to her was getting this promotion and getting this like raise, um, you know, and, and going on to respiratory medicine. And I was getting a heavy no for her on that. And, and I told her, if you do that, you're limiting yourself. This is the limit for you on the money. I even was hearing the amount. I'm like, you're going to be stuck at this amount. I think it was 30,000 a year, you know, which is okay. But if you have two kids and you're on your own, you need probably need more. Um, and so <laughs> she, I just kept hearing no on it. And, but this is what she did, which I love you guys. We, we all do this. She kept coming at it from every angle but what if I do this? What if I do this? What, can I still be a respiratory nurse if I do this? And, you know, can I, can I make it work somehow? Like, Mandy, do you see that? Do you see that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like a hundred times. No. Okay. She was stuck there, you guys, for a little while. Like she would come back for sessions and the sessions were always like, am I supposed to be a rep respiratory, you know, therapist? And I'm like, no. <laughs> just flat out no and her friend would still come through same friend would come through saying give it up stop it you know and and it wasn't clicking it just wasn't clicking and so what did the universe do she never she did all of the training completed it with flying colors got great remarks and grades from it never got hired doing it. She applied in many different places, never got hired for it. Okay. So again, it's the universe will show you. I mean, if you, even if you think in your head, you know what you're supposed to do. A lot of times the universe will just very plainly state it for you. So if you can just release and relax into that, then you'll get your signs. Like that's what we talk about with signs and synchronicities and how things are shown to you, right? Yeah. So if you if you're tuned to that, then you'll get your answers. But if you're fighting it and resisting it, it means you're not aligned. That's that's exactly what alignment is all about. So, yes, yeah, sometimes it's us holding ourselves back. Sometimes it's our minds holding ourselves back. Sometimes it's our friends and family holding us back, our obligations to our family, our obligations to our job, right? All of these things that tend to hold us back. And you guys, I mean, honestly, like, please put your questions down below or even remark or comment about what is holding you back. Sometimes it's just admitting what it is that brings it to the surface and then you can see it and you can finally hold it in front of you and go, this is that thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is it. 
this is that thing. And then you know what you can do with it? Take it. I should have a trash can right here. Next time I'll have a trash can beside us. <laughs> Where's the trash can emoji? Is there a trash can emoji? I don't know. Throw some trash can emojis up if you see them. We can throw it in the trash, right? Because it's just, it's just gunk. It's funky. It's holding you up. So this gal finally got the, she finally got the clue. She was like, okay, I'm letting go of the respiratory therapist thing. I guess I just need to be this nurse and just keep working many jobs being a nurse so I can add more work, <laughs> right? I can add more jobs on top of what I'm doing already and that's the solution. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes when we feel resistance to something, we go, oh, no, okay, that's a no. I'm not supposed to do that. So let me do more of what I'm doing now then. And that was, that. that's the solution, right? You can see how crazy I'm getting when I'm talking about this. <laughs> because I've done it. We all, we all do this. Um... We get into thinking that we're supposed to do more of something then if, if this other thing isn't happening. That's not necessarily the case either because adding more of something just gives you more. It, it adds more to your life. It's more energy. I'm all about the energy, right? We want less of, we want less of stuff. So... If you know what you're in alignment for, what you're supposed to be doing, if you have the clarity, then you know exactly, instead of doing more of something, you're supposed to let go and release and allow yourself to have this, like, just this flow of energy as opposed to, like, more, 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 ramping up with more, okay? So this friend of mine ended up <laughs> ended up giving up and saying, okay, I'm just going to keep working, which was fine. I mean, it was all she knew to do because she had kids. And God bless her. I mean, she wanted to take care. She is big on taking care of her kids, and her kids have done amazing through the years as I've been kind of like working with her. And so she ended up, um, I did another session with her, and intuitively I saw this man on this beach. I mean, this was an amazing session. This is one that she and I, we tell stories about it. We just can't believe how clear when I tuned in for her, I saw this man that was coming into her life. And I told her, I said, you're going to think he's weird when he comes up to you. Um, it's going to be on the beach. You're, um, you're going to think he's weird. And I saw all these hands, and I was like, I don't know what the hands mean. And I was trying to interpret it, like, maybe the hands mean uh, that, you know, he's a construction worker, like he works with his hands, maybe. I don't know. And so we did that session. She was very excited, because she definitely wanted this man to come into her life. And so then, like, I don't know, maybe six months later, I didn't hear from her again, six months later, she comes back and she tells me, Mandy, I can't believe it. I didn't know, I was on the beach, I was with my aunt, this man had come up to me and started play, like being playful and was chatting with me and, you know, he wanted my name and I'm, I'm like, who are you? And what I had told her in the session was, please remember this session. Please remember that I told you that you're going to think he's weird. And and just remember that, okay? Because that's going to be your trigger. You're going to remember it. You're going to remember this. And so she didn't, she didn't think anything about it. Then that summer came. This man comes up. She totally forgot about the session until... She was running, practically running from him. Like, she gathered up her stuff. She's like, okay, kids, let's go, because, like, there's this weirdo here, <laughs> like, following us. And they're at the beach, and they get to the car, and her aunt says to her, oh, he's, he's coming. And she's like, okay, get in the car, get in the car. And then all of a sudden, she turns around, and he's there. 
and he's like, I don't want to scare you off. Like, I'm a cop, you know, and and I just I just thought, you know, we were pl being playful and kind of hitting it off, and he showed her his badge, and, you know, and then it clicked. She was like, oh, yeah, Mandy said <laughs> there would be this man that comes in, and I, she told me that this guy started explaining things to her and saying, oh, um, I, I do, uh, I work with my hands, I do these art things, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, but it's like when you see these art cast things that the hands are holding, I was blown away when she told me that, that this guy does artwork that is like hands, that's what the hands was, okay, so she knew, all of these things were confirming in her mind, this is the guy. She ended up giving him her number. Probably shouldn't do that ever. <laughs> I'm never suggesting that to you guys, okay? But she felt safe enough because he did show he was a cop and, you know, she just figured, okay, well, I'll, I'll do this number, but maybe I'll blow it off. Like, we'll see, you know, maybe we'll see. So they met in a public place. They kept it safe. And they ended up falling in love. And it hasn't been the easiest, like, road for the two of them. Um, there's been lots of bumps and, and things along the way. Um, but what it did was it brought up some things to the surface for the both of them that ended up started clearing things from their life again. And now where this woman is, is she may end up buying a house in, within a year. I, I see this for her because things have moved now, you know, like for her very quickly, very rapidly. She may end up buying a house and she knows that to be true in her gut. And when I do sessions for her, we see it. And her biggest problem right now that's coming to the surface, you guys, and the thing that she's asking, which I want to say this out loud to everyone here to hear it, especially women but men too. Um, the biggest thing that she's having trouble with is, is it okay for me as a woman to buy a house? Like, let that sink in. Wow, right? I mean, how many women out there? It's, it's like, and, and this is what's funny, is I'm having a lot of women coming to me lately who are ready, they are so ready to be in committed relationships and, and to feel the flow and to be, you know, working with their intuition and, and also, this is very interesting, also buy their own house or have their own space. And yet they're in this place of like stuck and feeling nervous about that. And what's coming to the surface <clears throat> are these rules in society about whether it's okay for the woman to be um, the breadwinner, for the woman, you know, to have her own um, item. And I was like, blown away with her and I am super excited and I am super jumping up and down for her like to have that problem I mean yeah you guys are saying why not right on this <laughs> um of course I mean why not why not I mean yes I mean I am I am jumping up and down with joy for her to have that kind of problem to like be in a place of I'm a woman and I want to buy my own house and be okay with a man living with me there who isn't on the title of the house. Okay, let's reverse this. Like, let's just talk about, would it be, would we be asking that question? Would a man come to me with that feeling, that problem of, I want to buy a house and I'm with a woman and she makes money too, but I'm not going to put her on the title. Would we have that? Would there be that same issue coming up in that man? 
probably not. I'm getting like tingles so much on the back of my head as I'm talking about this. So I, if you're a man watching this, please keep watching. And if you're a woman, please keep watching because I think there are some truths here that are coming to the surface about, you know, energy and feminine and masculine energies and also just the energy of truth, right? I mean, we talk so much about masculine and feminine and, you know, whether that, you know, to be in this energy or that energy or whatever. And you know what I'm, I'm basically figuring out is, <laughs> screw that. I mean, let's set those aside as dualities, right? And let's just tune into truth. Let's just tune into truth. Yes, it's perfectly fine for you to be a woman and for you to buy a house. <laughs> Especially for a woman. I, I totally left out this part of the story, which kind of sucks, but this woman that I've been doing these sessions for, part of her journey that I worked through with her was that she was living in a house that her parents owned because they're kind of like in real estate and they let her live there and she was paying part of the rent and she was taking care of the house. Um, she's a very clean person and does a great job. And her parents had promised her that she would eventually own that home. They promised her through years that she worked there, paid, you know, part rent there and took care of it. She would own the home. Well, at some point, her parents now, now we're in the future, her parents decided we need the, we actually need to sell that home and we need some of the money from that home. And so it started to create issues between her and her parents. And her parents started to make her feel guilty um, for still living there, even though they had promised this is your home and they designated this to her as her home. They were letting her brother live in another home and they weren't having an issue. And so you see, it brings this stuff up to the surface. And a lot of times, and that's why I would start telling her, look, the universe is telling you it's time. It's time to go. It's time to release this home. And she had a really hard time letting go of that house. You know, this, these are things, you guys, that we deal with, that we get attached to, things that were promised, right? Um, or things that we think, like promotions that we're supposed to get or something like that, right? And you end up, you just, you have to look at those things and see the signs, right? If, if it's that your parents are starting to, um, you know, have trouble and you are feeling resistant too and then it's starting to cause hectic problems, there's probably more there than just that simple like, oh, there's just a tiff going on between me and my parents. It's probably that the universe is telling you, signaling to you, it's time for you to release that, okay? So I was working with her through that. Man, was that hard for her. I mean, and I... I can totally feel that. If I've had situations where it was very, very hard for me to let go. And um, she did. And I'm so proud of her. And so that, to me, for her moving on from that situation, letting it go, opened up, gave her space in her life for something new. And now, this, this has come up. This new thing for her to be able to buy her own home that is coming up as an actual thing and I mean for us to look back sometimes this is what I love to do with people when I worked with them for a long time sometimes you have to look back at your journey at all of the things that you've been through all of the things that you have overcome to see that you are exactly where you are supposed to be and it gives you more confidence to be able to say, yes, I deserve this, this is for me, I know it, this is my next step, this is what I need to break, have a breakthrough on so that I can say, I did this, okay? So that's alignment, you guys. <laughs> that's alignment. When you are able 
to get through the clutter and, and get through the societal roles and get over your fears and let go of the mind, right? And be in a place of, yes, it's okay to be in the mind from a logical place. Make sure that you check in with your heart too. And you're coming at things from a place of alignment, not from a place of just overthinking something or, you know, thinking you have to do something from a place of obligation or guilt or, you know, because all that stuff comes from the mind too. But that's not the type of mind we're thinking about. What we're talking about is the clarity, which is your intuition, which are your senses. They are, they come from a whole different place, okay? And maybe that's what we'll talk about next week, next Saturday, is what exactly are those and how do they help you? I think that would be really good to talk about um, and helping you guys figure out which ones you have, which ones are there for you, okay, as an individual for you to access. Um, so I want to look through some of the questions. If you guys um, want to, I'm going to scroll through really quick and see if we had anybody sharing anything or had any questions. This is a great um, chance to do that. Wish I wasn't an INFJ. I have <laughs> great input. <laughs> I am an INFJ too. INFJs are actually really intuitive. Um, and you can definitely learn to use those skills. That skill set is actually very, um, it's a small, very small percentage of people. Um, but you're actually very gifted. So definitely tune in next week and we will talk about, um, the gifts and, and I can kind of help you out a lot more with that being an INFJ, um, because yes, you have the feeler, the intuitive in you, and um, you'll get a lot of input <laughs> being an INFJ, for sure. But if you don't know how to utilize it to your advantage, um, I mean, you can use it for your own, but you definitely could use it to help others, so that would be amazing. Um, Somebody wrote synchronicity, so there must be some things that are being said here for people that um, that are meant to be heard. It would provide more of a feeling of safety for me. So yeah, um, I'm not sure, Jen, if you want to clarify in what way. Like, it must have been at some point when I said something. <laughs> um, it must be something that related to what I was saying for for you feeling safe. Um, but yeah, definitely like when you are, when you, when you do feel aligned, um, there is this sense of peace. It's different than feeling safe. That's interesting that you said that because early this morning when I was in meditation, I was hearing, um, uh, some things about people being protective the energy of protection and feeling safe. And I think that's coming up actually for a lot of people, at least where I live, especially because of earthquakes happening recently um, and people pe feeling safe. And and also, I mean, just things going on in the world. I, I hear this actually from a lot of parents. Um, their number one thing, when I ask what's your number one concern, they always bring up safety, especially for the world and their kids. And um, so, yeah, I mean, if you, in terms of being safe and feeling safe, like you want to make sure to check in logically and in your heart. You don't want to just be in your heart because if you're just in your heart, that can a lot of times um, lead you to like, unsafe situations so you definitely want to check in with the mind too um, so let's see it's also how we are programmed as children if you're wearing negative labels that's what they will believe it's our birthright to have abundance that is so true yes definitely um, it is I mean you guys like 
that's what I'm talking about for this woman, for all of you guys out there, especially for um, women that might be trying to have breakthroughs, you know, for themselves. Um, it is your birthright. Like you, you know, if you've worked hard and you are in complete alignment, um, even for men out there, I want you guys to know this because I'm, I'm actually getting that download right now, not to just do women, but to actually think of men because I, I have a lot of men that I work with and they have the same, you guys, actually what men struggle with is being okay with being feelers. I mean, yeah, that's totally fine, but there are so many men that come to me that are super intuitive. They're highly intuitive, okay? And um, they struggle with, is it okay for me to publicly be that way? And I'm like, definitely, like, these are your gifts. You, you have to utilize them. They are parts of you that need to be integrated. And that is part of the process, you guys. Like, once these things come to the surface, a lot of times it's just about allowing that next thing to be integrated. And that does take time. That's why I let people come and go for sessions when they need to because a lot of times we'll do a session or two or three and then it's like okay go off and do your life <laughs> you know <laughs> and let this process happen because it's not an overnight process you cannot um tap in and get your answer and then boom that's it you know now I own a home right no, there's, there's a lot of things. Sorry about that. That's my dog. He's barking. Um, there's a lot of things to be processed and to be released. So it does take time for that to happen. Um, not fair. You gave me chills. I know. I get it all the time, you guys. The back of my head tells it all. Like, I always get the little, t I call them confirmation tingles. I need to get a t-shirt that says confirmation tingles. Um, or start selling those shirts. <laughs> um, because when I, when I am talking to you guys, a lot of times um, it ends up, I get these tingles, and then I know that it's hitting home for, for specific people that are listening. So um, Jen is saying, purchasing my own home. Woohoo! Oh my God, Jen, I am so happy for you. Um, I remember when I saw you a long time ago, so yes, I mean, it, it's funny, it's happening for a lot of women right now, um, and I'm totally celebrating it uh, with you guys, so I'm giving you a high five, <laughs> good job, um, and go, I mean, keep going, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit, you guys, I mean, buy the home for yourself, and then if you you know, don't let that limit you. Like, you can do so much more. There's so much more ahead, you know, for you that, that you can tackle. So, um, okay, so let's see. I get some other questions on here and see what you guys are saying. We come to you because you have a very strong vibration and pure energy. Beautiful golden aura. Thank you so much. Aw, you're so welcome. Thank you, guys. Um... I love you guys, and I enjoy being here. I'm really enjoying um, coming on Saturday mornings and being here with you guys and kind of like doing our little group hug and our like, you know, working through some of these things that are really tough things um, for people and challenges that they're facing. So I totally get it. Like I've, oh my gosh, I've been through a ton. <laughs> <laughs> a ton of stuff so um and it never ends I mean we're always growing we're always ascending we're always um figuring out what's even more true for ourselves so that was the thing I wanted to share as you guys are adding please keep talking keep adding more questions I'll check in um was for you guys to work on a truth board I've been mentioning this a few times it's been coming up for a lot of people in sessions Instead of doing a vision board, which the vision board's still very um, valid, I believe in it. I actually still do vision boards, and I'm amazed that things come true <laughs> when I do a vision board. Um, but 
recently I've been getting downloads about telling people to do these truth boards. And I think the reason is because it really helps you align with your truth and know where you are right now and what is true to you right now so that you can put it on I'm calling it a truth board and you can see it and you can remind yourself that is my truth and that is okay it's totally fine for that to be my truth so um, a truth board is basically just you take what you know to be true right now so for example if you're buying a home um, or you know that's your next step and you know you feel that very very strongly then you would want to put that on your board okay so you would definitely put a, a house you know um, find something that lights you up especially like that you know the house that you know is supposed to be um, like close to the one and um, and just start there so you only want to write down words and put pictures of things that you know to be your truth right now and that might start very basic for for you like where you are um, sometimes it's only you know one thing or two things and that's it that is what your truth is um, an example is a gal that's coming to me that does want to buy a house she knows she wants to buy a house because she loves animals and where she's renting right now they don't allow her to have a pet and so having a pet and having her own place are those two important things that she knows is her truth right now I mean when she talks about it she has that burning desire it almost makes her cry to not have it so if that is your truth then put it on your truth board and only put things that you know as your truth, okay? Vision board is a little bit different. Visioning is like you're thinking about what your desires are, what you want for your future, kind of like what you're hoping for, um, really thinking big. I love using those words like thinking big when you're doing your visioning. Um, so kind of almost challenging yourself in a way that's like, I would really love this, <laughs> you know, like living in Hawaii, right? Or some, I mean, something really big. That would be what you want to do for your vision board. Truth is more where you are right now, present moment, current moment. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then um, ask a question and I will um, try to explain a little better. So, okay. So yeah, the answer to the previous comment about safety. All right, got it. Um, I'm still in the same home. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't be pretty soon, right? So I'm super excited for you. Um, just put that on your truth board. And it's definitely going to happen for you. I know it. Um, so just focus on really what is your truth. That is the most important thing. Some of you guys, um, your truth too right now for a lot of people I'm hearing um, is becoming more into alignment with their work and what they're meant to be doing. And so um, just putting a word on your truth board, like if you know you're supposed to be a healer or if you're supposed to be um, doing a certain kind of work, like uh, another gal I know, she knows she's headed into real estate so whatever that is for you, um, you, if you know that as your truth, then put that on your truth board. And that will help you um, emerge more into your gifts. It will become more clear also with time. And as you start putting those things on the board, you can also add things that you know to be true, like how you do your work, what ways always seem to be the way you know that you're doing your work. Putting that on your board is going to really help to clarify and develop that for you, okay? So sometimes you just have to get it down on paper or like on a board for you to actually see it over and over, and then it starts to kind of make more sense. Um, I have a tingle in my head now. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, they're always coming for me now like just it's like pff, all the time I get these tingles you guys it's really crazy um, and that's my truth I mean that's how that's how I operate so um, the more that you allow that stuff to happen and the more that you acknowledge it 
um, the more it's going to help you in your life. So um, I just want to thank you guys for being on live. I want to give you so much love and sending you lots of hugs and kisses and and definitely come back. Um, I will be back on next Saturday at 11. There's many ways to get in touch with me if you guys have questions, personal questions for yourself. Um, if you're working through something or you know someone who is working through something and you want to have that personal um, connection or that help, um, then you can reach me in a in a few different ways. Um, you can definitely personal message me right here on Facebook or Instagram, whichever one you're on. Um, and you can definitely also email me. Um, I have a couple of different businesses. So I have the intuitive side, which is the Discover Your Energy. Um, and you can find me at discoveryourenergy.com or amandagatlin.com. And then I also have um, this other business side that I am totally opening up to, which is really amazing. And that's at BePassionateAndProsper.com. So in that, I'm sharing all of the experiences I had as a business owner and all of the experiences I had with um, buying and getting into real estate and investing and sharing all of the stuff that I was able to um, learn through the years, <laughs> you know, hard knocks life, um, learning all of that stuff. So there's a couple of ways that you can reach me. Um, and if you have questions, definitely uh, private message me or email me and let me know. Okay, so it was a pleasure being here with you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll definitely see you next Saturday at 11 a.m. Okay. All right. Bye you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.